Ethereum is the number one blockchain, but it has many competitors, EOS, Cardano, Tron, Binance Smart Chain, they all try to compete with lower transaction fees and higher scalability. But will it be enough to become the next Ethereum? That's what we will see in this video. If you don't know me, I'm Julian, and on my channel, in the blogs, I explain blockchain technology with a beautiful French accent. The first competitor of Ethereum is Binance Smart Chain. Binance Smart Chain was launched in 2020, five years after Ethereum. It was launched by Binance, one of the biggest centralized exchange. It's a huge advantage to have the backing of Binance because they already have a lot of users and a lot of trading volume. They didn't need to do any ICOs since they already have the revenue from Binance to support the operations. Binance Smart Chain launched a $100 million fund for developers who want to build application on Binance Smart Chains, to my knowledge, is the biggest fund for developers across all blockchains. So for sure, it's going to help them a lot to get developers to build on their platform. For the technology, it's basically a copy and paste of Ethereum. Business-wise, it's actually pretty smart because they save a lot on development costs and they can reuse all the development tools of Ethereum, which are very good. The transaction fee on Binance Smart Chain are way lower than Ethereum. For example, if you want to transfer an ES20 on Binance Smart Chain, you'll pay one cent, but the same on Ethereum with the current gas price, it will be roughly $7. In terms of transaction speed on Binance Smart Chain, you can do 200 transactions per second to be compared with 15 transactions per second on Ethereum. When it comes to the ecosystem of application, it's much smaller than Ethereum. On Ethereum, you have more than 1,700 apps, but on Binance Smart Chain, you only have 60. Most of their apps are for DeFi. They have copycat of the most famous DeFi app of Ethereum. For example, Uniswap is PancakeSwap on Binance Smart Chain, Compound is Cream Finance, etc. If you're interested in learning more about Binance Smart Chain, I have a video about this on my channel. Next, another competitor to Ethereum is Tron. Tron was launched in 2018 by Justin Sun. Justin Sun is quite a controversial figure. He's been called a scammer. I don't know if he's a scammer, but what I saw from him in social media, he comes across as a snake oil salesman. You always make this crazy claim like Tron is going to last for centuries, blah, blah, blah. So I don't really like the leadership of this project. So they did an ICO and they raised 70 million. They were quite successful for the market cap they are only at 2 billion compared to 146 billion for ethereum so much much lower and for the technology like for binance smart chain it's basically a copy and paste of ethereum they created a white paper where they didn't give credit for ethereum they pretended they created everything but it's not true in terms of transactions per second they are able to have 2000 per second which is much more than ethereum for transaction fees they don't have transaction fees at all and for development tools since they inherit all the tools from ethereum it's pretty good in terms of blockchain app activity they are second to ethereum with 742 dApps on their network in terms of unique users, they actually first before Ethereum with more than 1 million active users for the last 30 days. However, when you look at the transaction volume in dollar, it's only 300 million to be compared with almost 120 billion for Ethereum. It's because most of their dApps are game where the transaction value is very low. Then we have EOS. EOS was one of the first Ethereum killer. It was launched in 2018, three years after Ethereum. It was started by Dan Larimer, who is a seasoned crypto entrepreneur. He already launched BeatShare and Steemit, which are respectively a crypto exchange and a decentralized blogging platform but he left EOS in January 2021. This is pretty bad for EOS to see the top guy in the leadership leaving the project. EOS did a huge ICO of $1 billion, the biggest of all time. So you would think with that much money, that must be the best blockchain, right? Well, not exactly. They have a market cap of 2.4 billion, which is way less than 146 billion of Ethereum. And the EOS token performed pretty badly in 2020, whereas the rest of crypto was having a great year. In terms of technology, it's totally different from Ethereum. It's their own implementation. They can do up to 4,000 transactions per second, much more than 15 transactions per second of Ethereum. There is no transaction fee. 
and when it comes to development tools i've tried them and they're really not great for example you program smart contract in c which is a low level language which is terrible for that kind of use for smart contract you want to use a high level language so that you can have many many programmers who can learn it but with c you're going to scare away a lot of developers they also have this ide called eos studio it's kind of like this bulky software exactly the kind of developer really hate to use so i really didn't like the development tools they did manage to steal some market share from ethereum for gambling and game dApps but their dApp ecosystem is still way less active than ethereum in general the next Ethereum competitor is Cardano. Cardano was launched in 2017. It was created by Charles Haskinson. So Charles Haskinson is quite a controversial figure in the crypto world. So he got kicked out of many projects. So first he was a beat chair when he was working with Dan Larimer, but he was kicked out of this project. Then he went on to work on the early version of Ethereum, but after just a few months, he was also kicked out. And many people in the Ethereum community have a really bad image of Charles. Then he went to work a little bit on he went to create Cardano, but at some point he paused to work on Ethereum Classic, another version of Ethereum. But there again, he was kicked out of the team. And after he went back to Cardano, there are many stories about this guy. I haven't worked with him personally, but you know, when you hear so many bad stories from so many different people, well, maybe there is some truth to it. So this really makes me doubt the leadership of Cardano to get started. Cardano did an ICO of more than 60 million, so they have enough money. They have a market cap of 10 billion, which is way smaller than Ethereum. Their technology is completely different from Ethereum. For the consensus algorithm, they use a proof of stake algorithm, they use a sharding, and it's allowed Cardano to be much more scalable than Ethereum. And they also will have much lower transaction fees. As of recording this video, on Cardano, you can only do transfer of the native cryptocurrency ADA, but you cannot do smart contract yet. This feature will be added in the first half of 2021. So all the Cardano fans are really excited by the smart contract, but really that's something that have existed for a long time for Ethereum. So to me, it really seems like too little too late. In the upcoming smart contract system, they created a new programming language called Marload, which is specialized in DeFi, which is supposed to be more secure than Solidity, the programming language for smart contract on Ethereum. But I don't think this is such a strong argument because Solidity itself is not a part of Ethereum. It's an external software. So in the future, it will be really easy for Ethereum to create a new programming language safer than Solidity. We are not limited by the Ethereum technology here. I've played around with the development tools of Cardano and I have to say it's not great. And this is really important because if you want to be a smart contract platform but your development tools are not so good, then how do you want developers to come and build so many smart contracts? And in terms of the ecosystem for dApps on Cardano, currently it doesn't exist because they don't have that smart contract feature released yet. So we'll have to wait a bit to see some action here. The next Ethereum competitor is Tezos. Tezos was launched in 2018 by Archer and Kathleen Britman, husband and wife. So already <laughs> I don't like it because it's always a bit risky to mix personal relationship with business. You can have some drama very easily. Talking of drama, there was a big lawsuit in the Tezos ecosystem between on one side the two founders of Tezos, Archer and Kathleen Bretman, and on the other side the head of the Tezos Foundation. So without getting into the detail of it, as an outsider, it's really bad to see this. If they can't even agree internally, how do you want them to compete with other blockchain? It's impossible. Tezos had the second biggest ICO after EOS with $232 million raised. In terms of technology, it's totally different from Ethereum. The flagship feature is the on-chain governance mechanism. Thanks to this, we can have a smooth process to update the rules of the blockchain. This avoids to do hard fork. Hard fork can be problematic for certain blockchain like Bitcoin, but for Ethereum, hard forks were not a problem. There were many of them and it was absolutely fine. Besides, you don't necessarily need to update the protocol forever. For example, for Ethereum, once it reaches Ethereum 2.0, we don't really need to update Ethereum after that. It will be mostly finalized. So I don't see this on-chain governance mechanism as a big advantage over Ethereum. 
In terms of transaction per second, Tezos is a bit above Ethereum with 50 transactions per second, but the difference is not huge. They do have cheaper transactions. In terms of development tools, they have two programming language for smart contract, Mikkelsen and Ligo, both inspired by OCaml. OCaml is part of a family of programming language called functional language. These languages are really liked by mathematician, but not so much by programmer. If you take the average programmer who maybe know some web development, JavaScript, if you see a functional programming language, it probably won't feel very comfortable. So I really don't think that was a smart decision to use OCaml as an inspiration for the smart contract language. It's really going to make it harder to attract a lot of developers to their platform. For the DApp ecosystem, they already have 124 DApps, including some DeFi DApps. So we are still at the very beginning. This is much smaller than Ethereum. The next Ethereum competitor is Polkadot. Polkadot was started in 2017, but they only launched their mainnet in 2020. Originally, the idea of Polkadot was to connect blockchains to each other, but recently it also started to be considered as its own blockchain that could compete with Ethereum. It was launched by Gavin Wood, one of the co-founders of Ethereum and the creator of Solidity, the programming language of Ethereum's smart contract. He's a good guy, excellent developer, involved in the blockchain ecosystem for a long time. So I'm pretty confident in the leadership of Polkadot. They raised 144 million for the ICO. They have a market cap of 15 billion, still way smaller than Ethereum, but it's the biggest market cap among all the Ethereum competitors. The technology of Polkadot is quite different from the other Ethereum killers. They have a main chain called the relay chain and they have other chains called parachain connected to each other through the relay chain. These chains make Polkadot very scalable. They are similar to shards in Ethereum 2.0. What makes Polkadot parachains very unique is that anybody can add a parachain by going through an auction process to get one of the 100 parachain slots available. Parachains are built with a framework called Substrate. This makes it really easy to build customized parachains that are configured to work best for your own use case. For example, it's possible to use the Ethereum technology for one of these parachains. The development tools of Polkadot are good. The documentation is good and they have many tools like Substrate, the framework to build parachains. For smart contracts, Polkadot has a language called Ink based on Rust. Rust is a low-level language quite hard to learn so it's probably not a great choice for a smart contract language but fortunately since it's also possible to build parachains based on the ethereum technology you can reuse all the dev tools from ethereum like the solidity programming language the approach of Polkadot is quite unique. I really appreciate that it's not just another copy of ethereum like so many other ethereum killers. The transaction fees are much lower than on ethereum Ethereum and it's also much more scalable than Ethereum with 1 million transactions per second in theory. For the DApp ecosystem, currently they have 17 projects and I've heard a lot of interest from the developer community so I predict a rapid growth in Polkadot DApp ecosystem this year. What's going to happen next? Will all of these Ethereum killers really take over and become the first blockchain? Well, not so fast. First of all, the main advantage of many of these other blockchain is that they have a higher scalability, but this is when we compare with Ethereum 1, but with Ethereum 2.0, the next version of Ethereum, actually it will have a capacity of 100,000 transactions per second, which is largely enough for the need of Ethereum. All of these Ethereum killer really have a short time frame to compete and try to take as much market share from Ethereum as they can, because when Ethereum 2.0 is fully released in two years, it's game over, it's too late. Also, Ethereum is not gonna sit here and and do nothing and see its market share being stolen by all the blockchain is going to react so that's why we have all of this sidechain project that will bring scalability to ethereum before ethereum 2.0 is going to be released one of the most famous sidechain on ethereum is matic and we already start to see a couple of projects being deployed on matic actually if you check dab radar you will find that the activity on matic is higher than many of these so-called ethereum killers so it's really going to be an uphill battle for all these ethereum killers if this ethereum killer focus on a specific application like game i think some of them might have a shot to steal some market share of ethereum but 
if they just try to steal some market share without having any specific target it's going to be a little bit tougher on Binance Smart Chain, they did manage to steal some market share for DeFi, but I think it's going to be short term because as soon as we have some layer 2 scaling solution working well on Ethereum, I'm thinking you're going to see a lot of liquidity coming back to Ethereum because DeFi is something where network effects are really huge. In DeFi, user really value composability, the ability to go from one protocol to the other. So naturally, they're going to be one chain that attract all the DeFi activity. If you're an investor, I suggest to invest mainly in Ethereum and a little bit on these Ethereum alternatives, but consider them like mining stocks. Like right now, they're really cheap. They could go really high in the future, but it's also really risky. And long term, I don't believe in them as much as Ethereum. One exception for Polkadot, which wants to be the connector of blockchains. So it's not in direct competition of Ethereum. So I think Polkadot potentially can have a shot. If you are an entrepreneur and you want to launch a project, I suggest to start on Ethereum because that's where you're going to find all the investors, users, developers, etc. Except if you want to do some game, maybe you can look at other blockchain. And if you are a developer, I also suggest to focus on Ethereum because in terms of opportunity on the job market, that's where you're going to find most of the opportunity. And in the future, if you start to get bored of Ethereum for fun, you can learn some other blockchain, but only after you've mastered programming on Ethereum. Next, I have another video for you where I explain how Ethereum works. If you want to check it out, you click here. I'll see you there.